Welcome back to the Knox channel and you're on the GSX-R 750 project series. This is part two of fixing the brakes. Okay, so we haven't done an episode on the GSX-R 750 series for a little while now. Um, reasons for that, to be honest, I've been out there loving the bike, getting my head around all the upgrades that we've done. We've done quite a few track days as well. And to be honest, I've just been enjoying the bike. So this is a little interim video before the finale, and hopefully this will get the bike up to where I want it. So just to quickly explain as well, you'll see some of the different cabinets lying around and stuff. We are actually building a workshop, a dedicated motorcycle and parts tools workshop in this little area. We've found that we're actually doing quite a lot of this mechanicing type of stuff. And we're also fixing tools that we use in production and so on uh, for the Knox brand. So, you know, next time you see it, it will look very lovely. We'll have pillar drills, we'll have parts washers bench grinders, all the sort of stuff that you need to do, the type of stuff that, that we're doing. So I guess following on from where we last left off in terms of brake upgrades for the Jixxer 750, last one that we did, we did two things basically. We fitted Hell braided brake lines and I went to SBS race sintered brake pads. And I stand behind them as upgrades and I'd do them on any bike that I owned in the future. They made a really big difference in terms of the braking feel. There was a lot more power, significantly more power, and there was a lot less fade as well on track. However, <laughs> and this is why we're back here, I don't think it's exactly where I want to take it in the end because I'm still finding, not on every track, um, but on some tracks I'm still getting quite a bit of uh, brake fade. I, I don't know what it is, but Donington Park seems to do something really bad to my braking system. Um, there's a section of that track, I think as you come into Foggy S's, obviously you're down from about 150, hard on the brakes, then you back out of Foggy S's, down into Mole Bond Loop, you're really hard on the brakes there as well, and then back up to Goddard's. It's like brake overload basically and i can find it in a session my brakes are just they're just toast i mean i get back into the pit lane and i can't even pull a stoppy um really overloaded so this is what the next part is about basically so just a little bit of insider information on that one actually so when i was at the bennett's track day at donington park they had the bsb mechanics basically for the kawasaki super stock 600 team there and they were helping and they i had them have a look at my brake system as well actually and they said you know they were bled fine with plenty of meat on the pad so on and so forth but he did go and talk to me about it because obviously in uh, stock 600 stock thousand classes you have to run uh, standard master cylinders and they're obviously running the zx6r and the guy who was there he said, look, the master cylinder on that ZX6R is really, really bad. Um, but because it's stock 600 race and they have to run what the bike comes homologated with. But the way that they manage that is they just chuck brake pads at it all weekend. I mean, um, every race, there's new brake pads front and back. Every qualifying, you know, they, they're going through like boxes and boxes of brake pads and they're changing the fluid out constantly just to give the rider the best braking system, even though the master cylinder isn't possibly as good as it could be, let's say. So for me, I'd probably be in a similar position. I think, um, you know, when I've put new pads in it and when I've put new fluid in it and stuff, the brakes are fantastic, but I don't want to be chucking new pads at it all the time. I want to get, you know, four, five, six track days, hopefully out of a set of brake pads. So I'm going to do something else. So as you can see, I've taken off the stock master cylinder, the Nissin one. You know, I've put a new lever on this in the past and it probably needs a blooming good service because it's sounding 
not that clever to be fair. So this one is getting replaced with this one. Now this is the Hell Master Cylinder, Hell Performance Master Cylinder here in Devon um, in the UK. So as you can see, it's beautifully machined. What a lovely product it is. It's got a lovely action. We've got an adjustable uh, span adjuster as well. So if I get more fade, I can put the uh, lever out. Um, it's just a nice product. No funky Chinese eBay lever job. You know, this should be a quality product. It should break a lot harder um, and be more consistent throughout my sessions. It should be a lot stronger, basically, in terms of pumping that fluid into the brake system. Be much stronger, give me better feel. There's no noises coming from it, which is a good sign. And um, I'm going to fit this. Now, just a little one on this one, actually. Uh, I've had this master cylinder a little while. Um, and uh, actually, I, I got it at the same time I got the, the, the braided brake lines. Um, but the reason I didn't fit it, and of course you get this when you start to sort of get into this upgrading your motorcycle. A lot of these products are really designed for track only and for uh, racing, you know. So the road functionality is sort of a second thought. Well, it turns out there's not a, a brake light switch in this. And of course I'd never even think about that sort of stuff. Um, so you need to buy what's called a, a brake light switch. So normally where the brake um, lines would go in, you just normally have a little screw like that that goes into it. Um, but this is a brake light switch. So effectively what this does is this connects to your wiring and that's gonna turn the brake light on. Obviously I need that because it's a road bike. I'm gonna need it to pass MOT and I need it to ride on the road as well. Um, but at the time these were actually out of stock for like two months. Um, I will put the spec in the uh, description of exactly which brake light switch you need to buy because if you're like me i actually ordered the wrong one yes it was an m10 but it was like a 1.25 pitch or something it wouldn't screw in and it was too long as well so this is the m10 by one and it's the short version basically it's the same that goes in the brembo product so hopefully now we should be able to install it and get the brake light working as well um, so look, while I'm taking my mass cylinder off and I've got all the fluid out of the system, this is the perfect time to change my uh, brake pads again. Now, in, since the last video, I've actually changed the brake pads a couple of times. So originally we were on the 806 RS pads and then there was the 806 RST, which were the newer version of the race centered ones. They were designed to last slightly longer, I think. Um, over the race center. What you do find about those race center pads if you're using them on track, man, you are going through them like there's no tomorrow. So this one here, which I've just pulled out, that's been on two track days and I've not done a lot of road miles in between. And I would say we're about 70% cooked if you compare that to this new one um, that I'm gonna be putting in. About 70%, I would have said cooked and I don't really want to run another track day on this because I want to go to the next one. Uh, first one of 2022, absolutely flying. So what am I replacing them with? Well, these are a slightly upgraded pad actually. These are the 806, so it's same size, but these are dual carbon instead. Now, while the race centered ones are designed for track, they're designed for racing. Um, these dual carbons are the next level up. and. If you read actually on the, the internet page that they've got, um, these are more orientated towards managing the high temperatures. So I'm also hoping that by using these, um, these are also gonna reduce the temperatures uh, and stop my fluid boiling up and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna put these in, see how we get on. You'll probably see them mentioned in a future video or I'll do a blog about them or something on our uh, website. Of course, while you're at it as well, you might as well clean all your calipers and get all the crap out of them. So yeah, let's crack on with that. Yeah, so we've encountered a little bit of a problem because basically the um, way that the mass cylinder clamps on is wider than what was stock. And I'm gonna to struggle to get my throttle on the full bar 
Now, obviously this is partly my fault because this is a race track orientated product. So I'm trying to put it on a bike that's got stock road clip-ons. I mean, if you were to put like proper race clip-ons on this bike, they're really long and, and you know, I've seen pictures of them and they've got loads of room, but this is obviously really tight. Um, so, and I don't want to change my clip-ons, I can't be bothered. So what I am going to do is make a little bit of a adjustment to this. Um, I'm going to have to shave some material off this H part here and here to get it to fit right and not interfere with my throttle. Of course, now as well, you have to run um, brake lever guards as well. So I need enough clearance on this side of the clip on to get that on. And I need enough uh, clearance to get this part on too. So just trying to fit it now after our little adjustment. Not that we're recommending that you do that, it's definitely not in the uh, user instruction information, but as you can see, we've got a lot more clearance there now. And fingers crossed, when I bump this up, I should just have enough for my brake lever guard, which I do. It's a miracle and it works. <laughs> So now I've got the mass cylinder attached to the bar. Now's the time to put the brake light switch in. This should be fairly straightforward to be fair. These spade little adapters go straight into me um, wiring loom. So that should be straightforward. And obviously I've got my little copper washers to crush against the braided uh, brake line. That's probably gonna take me a minute. So you'll see it back when it's all installed. It's a nicer feel. There's none of the clickiness that I got with the old uh, brake lever. Obviously, I've done a couple of hashes to that. Um, it just feels a bit higher quality. I mean, we're not talking mega money for these brake master cylinders. I think this held one is about £239 in the UK, including uh, VAT. You know, so it's not a lot of money, and your brake light switch is going to cost you another 30 So, you know, in terms of motorcycle upgrades there's not a lot to moan about really and I think while on the road I'm not really going to be able to tap into how good it is you know initial feedback or initial feelings are that this should this should make quite a big difference and I'm certainly happy with the way that the brake is feeling and the way that I'm able to modulate the braking power It went at least I can pull a little stoppy. <laughs> Clearly I'm riding on the road. It's middle of January, wet, cold conditions. It's hardly like I'm gonna put the full braking system to the, to the test in this environment. It's like impossible. And it's pretty much impossible to make a proper judgment on the road anyway. I think um, I'm quite excited to test it basically. So look, as I said, we're not gonna do another dedicated video to this brake system, but I will bring it back up again in a future video. And I will probably write a review on uh, the Planet Knox blog. So if you don't know where that is, go and check it out. I'll put the link in the description for that and you can go and check out all of our blogs. And as I say, I'll do a write up in due course on it. So look, really hope you've enjoyed that video. I hope there's been a little couple of nuggets of information. Um, as I said, you know, this isn't an expensive upgrade to do. I think £239, which is chum change in motorcycle performance upgrades. So definitely worth considering. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Please check out the Knox range. Subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think in the comment section and we will see you next time.